we are going to tackle how to maximize and or well and or minimize some functions, uh, specifically some continuous functions. So basically, if we're maximizing or minimizing continuous functions, we have really two scenarios. We're going to talk about them over closed intervals. Closed intervals, closed finite intervals, or <coughs> open infinite intervals. So basically, it asks this. If I give you a continuous function, will it have an absolute maximum? Will it have an absolute minimum? And how can you apply it to real life? We're talking about cost. If you're a business, you probably want to find out the lowest cost, right? Or you want to find out the maximum profit. That's probably what you want to do, right? You wouldn't want to find the maximum cost and the minimum profit. That would suck. Because then you're going to waste a lot of money and you're going to get fired probably. Uh, or if you just guess, you're not going to be making as much money. You're going to be spending too much money if you just guess at things. I think if we produce this amount, then it's going to be good. Let's try. Well, why don't you do the calculus and figure out exactly what you need to produce, exactly how much it's going to cost, and minimize the cost, maximize the profit, and that's, that's pretty much the idea. Does that make sense? If you're making stuff, you want, and, and you're trying to, like, boxes, are you going to make a, a storage box that's this long and this wide and, and that, that deep? Would that be a good storage box? Not if you want to maximize the volume. Right, with the same amount of surface space. So if I say, here's a, here's a thousand square feet of cardboard, make me the best box you can. We should be able to do that. We should be able to figure out the dimensions using some calculus. And that's what we're talking about, maximization problems. Well, I'm going to relate this back to absolute max and absolute min. Here's the idea. If you have a closed interval, closed interval looks like this with brackets. If you have a closed interval with brackets, do you for certain have an absolute max? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have an absolute min? Yeah. So for a close interval, because these have brackets, you will certainly have solutions. There will be solutions. If it's a continuous function and there's a closed interval, always. How about open? Open intervals. Because remember with the absolute max and absolute min, if you think back, if you watched the video from a while back, uh, absolute maxima and minima must occur at one of two places. Must occur at relative max or min for continuous functions, relative max or min, or at endpoints. Do you remember talking about that? If I take away the fact that it has endpoints, well, then it must occur at relative maxes or mins, which don't have to be, could be, but don't have to be the absolute max or min. So while a closed interval will definitely have an absolute max or min, or will definitely have a maximum and a minimum, because we have endpoints, this one might not have them, because there's no endpoints. Are you, are you with me on this? So it might not have solutions. Well, we're going to jump right into it with an example. We'll start off quite simply. I, did, I want to basically do this example to give you uh, some vocabulary and how to, how to do the problem. Let's say that I want you to build <clears throat> a region that's fenced in, so a, a rectangular region, so basically Wyoming or something. I think it's pretty much a rectangle, right? Well, if you consider the Earth to be flat, it would be a rectangle. It's curved. Never mind. Uh, it's a surface space. But let's pretend the world's flat for Wyoming, because <laughs> have you been to Wyoming? It pretty much is. Um, not really. They have mountains and stuff. But let's just pretend it's flat and it's a rectangle. I want you to fence it. We're going to make this easier than that. But basically, you're fencing a rectangular region. Fence a rectangular region and maximize the area.
You have 100 feet of fencing available. Of course, this is not Wyoming anymore, okay? But because Wyoming is very large, we're just going to fence some regular area, okay? And right, well, you have 100 feet of fence. This, by the way, is called something specific for these applied problems. It's called a constraint. It says this is what you have to work with. It's putting a limit on your area, basically. Because if I said maximize the area, you just go, OK, I'm going to make it as long as I can times as wide as I can. That's maximizing. But if, as soon as I say, oh, you only have 100 feet of fencing, well, that changes things, doesn't it? You have to have that statement. That's called a constraint. Constraints can be given to you, they can be implied in the problem, they can be realistic constraints, but somewhere in, your, in most of these problems you will have some sort of a constraint. Now, one great thing to do with these applied problems, they're all going to have something you can draw. So try to draw a picture of them to get your mind wrapped around it. We're talking about a rectangle here, so we're probably going to want to draw a rectangle here. So let's draw a rectangle. It doesn't matter what you call the sides, but call them something. Call this one maybe x and this one y. <coughs> Bless you. Are you with me still? What's this side? X. Right, and this one's y because inherently we know about rectangles. Opposing sides are of equal value. So we have that. The next thing you do, you come up with some sort of area that has to deal with what you're trying to maximize or minimize. Something you're trying to find the maximum or minimum of. Very much like with related, related rates, right? You're trying to find an area that incorporates everything. Here you're trying to find a formula, uh, sorry, formula that incorporates everything. Here you're trying to find a formula that incorporates what you're trying to maximize with your figure. So we want our formula. <clears throat> and you need to list out any constraints that you have. Okay, tell me something. We've already drawn our picture. Let's come up with a formula that has to do with what we're trying to maximize. What are we trying to maximize here, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, so if we're trying to maximize area, you need to be able to come up with a formula for the area. What's the formula for area? Specifically for this, what's the formula for our area? X, Y would give us the area of that rectangle. True? x times y. Now let's talk about our constraint. What does the 100 feet of fence have to do with anything? That has to be your... Uh, What's that called? Domain. Oh, kind of, kind of, kind of, sort of. Perimeter. Perimeter. We'll talk about domain in a minute. Okay? But the 100 feet of fencing, you know that goes around your figure, right? So that is your perimeter. So right here, our formula we're trying to maximize is the area. You with me on that? That's what it's, the question says. But a formula that's inherent in our problem has to do with our constraint. And it says, well, I know that if I add up all the sides, it has to equal how much? Now, add up all the sides. How much do you get? Good. If I add that up, I add this one, this one, this one, this one. That's two x's plus two y's. and you get another formula out of your constraint. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Okay, very good. Now, the question is, <clears throat> what are we trying, here's where you answer your question, if you have two more than one formula, what are you trying to do here? Are you trying to maximize your constraint or maximize your area? Your area. So what you're gonna do, use your constraint, solve for one variable, and substitute it into the formula that you're trying to maximize or minimize. The reason is, can you find a derivative of x and y? Yeah, you can with implicit. However, you're going to need to solve for y anyway to be able to do anything with it. So solve this for y and substitute it in. So we're going to solve our constraint for one variable. I would choose y. Just, I don't know. I like y. 
So solve for y and then substitute that into your formula. So you're going to solve the constraint. for one variable and sub into your formula. Okay, you get to choose which one you want to solve it for. I'm going to choose to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x, I'm going to divide by 2, and I'm going to get 50 minus x, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So from here, it's 3 Yeah, if I divide everything by 2, I'm going to get y equals 50 minus x. So far, so good? What that does is says, okay, now that I have y equals 50 minus x, let's take that, let's put it here. That changed our formula from two different variables into one variable, and that says I can do something with calculus with it. All right, you need that one variable for us. So I'm going to get a equals x, and instead of y, I need, pr I need parentheses. Do you see why I need parentheses? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Yeah. You probably hate us right now. Hate? No. Hate's a strong word. But you need parentheses. They're important. If you give me this, you know I'm going to have a cow. <laughs> Literally. Have, I, I used to live on a dairy. I could have a cow if I wanted. There's 6,000 of them. You have 6,000 cows. There's only 45 of you. you have 45 cows. Five cows for each person. Yeah, a lot of cows for each person. <clears throat> so far, so good? make it easier before you do the next thing we're going to do. You see, right now, we have this formula for area, right? What we're trying to do is maximize the area, which is why we're working with the formula for area. Now, what we learned here was that this really is a closed interval. There's only so far I can make my x. I can't make my x or my y like 3,000 feet, right? Because I only have 100 feet of to work with. So I, I'm actually dealing with some some domain restraints right there. We'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> but we know that wherever a maximum or a minimum occurs, it's going to be at either an end point, which we'll talk about in a bit, or it's going to be at a relative extreme point, a relative max, like this. How do you find relative maxes? What do you do with functions? That's a function. What do you do with functions to find a relative max? First, first derivative. You take a derivative, because you know relative maxes happen where the slope is zero, right? To find the slope, you take a derivative. So with your applied problems, let's take a derivative of that. Now, I wouldn't be so silly as to do a product rule here. I'd probably distribute and get fifty x minus x squared, and then take a derivative. But we're going to take a derivative because what a derivative is is our what's a derivative again? Slope. And we want to know where the slope equals zero because where the slope equals zero gives us a critical point, and that could potentially be our relative max or min. If it's 